All right, this was a speech that the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave in 1966. 1966. And it is <coughs> a speech that he gave on Yutet Kislev. In other words, at, around this time of the year, <coughs> the holiday <coughs> when really the whole Chabad movement was really born, namely when the first Rebbe of Chabad got out of prison. We talked about this before he was imprisoned by his enemies. They were religious Jews, and they, they hated him for the same reason that King David, his enemies were also religious Jews, right? There were religious Jews, Shimi ben Gera and, and uh, <coughs> Doag and Achitofel. And they didn't like the idea that he was a king and that he was teaching them this, <clears throat> trying to, 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 to change every aspect of their life. Same reason why Moses was hated, right? Moses and Korach came along. But in any case, the first Rebbe of God, he got out of prison, and that showed clearly that his enemies were not correct. They weren't right. As good as their intentions might have, might have been, <coughs> but they were not right. <coughs> <coughs> and that the teachings of the first Rebbe of Chabad have to be spread out. What are the teachings of the first, of the first Rebbe of Chabad? Basically, they are an explanation of the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov was a Jew called Yisrael Baal Shem, and he lived about 300 years ago, 350 years ago, and he began this whole new way of, <clears throat> of uh, explaining the Torah called Hasidut <clears throat> to the degree that it was so different than anything that had come before it that it, <clears throat> it's basically a whole <clears throat> different dimension of Torah. It's a new, just like there's the simple meaning in the Chumash. The simple meaning. There was a person called Abraham. It was a, he married a woman called Sarah. And they had a child called Yitzchak. And he had another child called Yishmoel. <clears throat> and these people really lived. They lived like, you know, 4,000 years ago. They really lived. They really were real people. But also, there's a lot of interesting stories not told in the Torah about them. And that's a whole different level of Torah. That's called Midrash, Drosh. And then there's also another whole level of Torah called Remez. <coughs> things that are hinted at in the Torah. And then there's an, a fourth level of Torah, which is called Sod, Secrets. <coughs> the Kabbalistic mysteries of every detail of the Torah. And then there's a fifth aspect of the Torah, and that's called Hasidut. <clears throat> and this fifth type of the Torah, fifth dimension of learning of the Torah, this, in a way, it's totally different from all the others, but it, it's different in as so far as it reveals the essence of all the other aspects of the Torah, the simple meaning of the Torah called the Pshat, the homiletic called the Remez, the Drush, which is Midrashic, and even the secrets, the mysteries of the Torah. <clears throat> Hasidut reveals something new in each and every one of them, namely the godliness, the godliness. And that's going to be the purpose of Hasidut is to reveal the godliness in all the different aspects of the Torah. And because the Torah is the blueprint for the world to reveal godliness in every aspect of the world, which can be summed up in one word, Mashiach. The purpose of Hasidut is to bring Mashiach. And even more exactly, Hasidut is the teachings of the Mashiach. One of the jobs of the Mashiach is going to be to bring Mashiach. He's going to educate the whole world. <coughs> so this is a whole, this is, if you want to call it the essence of the Torah, <coughs> being brought to the simplest of people, to everyone, 
to a certain degree, even the goyim. So let's go. Ready? What is this thing, this new type of learning called chasidut <coughs> that it made the religious Jews so mad that they put the first Rebbe Chabad in jail, they wanted to kill him. <coughs> what, what's there? What is it? So, okay, let's start from the beginning, just like I just taught you. Borah Hashem. <coughs> Thank God. What is the purpose, the topic, the uniqueness of the teachings of Hasidut? <clears throat> Regarding the teachings of Hasidut, what is unique about it? Al Torah, on the other aspects of the Torah, like I just finished saying. The simple meaning, the homiletic meaning, the midrashic meaning, the kabbalistic meaning <clears throat> that was revealed before. Namro biurim rabim. There were said given a lot of examples. Some of them are aleph. <clears throat> Four different novelties, new things that did not exist before Hasidut, and now they do. Aleph, in the time of the Baal Shem Tov, <clears throat> the world was unconscious. Judaism, <clears throat> the Jews were unconscious. And by means of the Baal Shem Tov, <clears throat> the Jews became <clears throat> conscious again. What does it mean, conscious and unconscious? <clears throat> the Jews, <clears throat> okay, the Jews, had suffered a lot of serious setbacks, serious setbacks in Judaism. What's the difference between a conscious person and an unconscious person? One big difference is, is a conscious person can be happy. He's alive. He is, he is positive. He's productive. A person that's unconscious, he's not producing anything. He's not alive. He's not happy. <clears throat> he's not positive. He's not doing anything. Unconscious. <clears throat> let, let, let me, I, want, I want to just make a, a small diversion here. We just finished Yutet Kislev. It was a war basically between the first Rebbe of Chabad and Napoleon. In just a couple of days, we're going to have the holiday of Hanukkah. Same type of war. It was the war of the Jews against the Greeks. Okay, the Greeks wanted basically the same thing as Napoleon did. And the Hashemunim wanted the same thing as the first Rebbe Chabad wanted. Okay, let's look at this. What would be so bad if Napoleon would have won? God forbid. What would have been? <clears throat> so, so there wouldn't be Judaism. So what? People would just do what they want to. I mean, you know, who cares? Right? Just, you know, you live your life. And that's what Napoleon wanted. You live your life as easily and as pleasurably as possible. <clears throat> and that's it. You live. Well, what's so bad about that? You know, that's what Napoleon wanted. You know, he didn't want to kill people or, you know, rape people or anything like that. It wasn't barbaric. Exactly the opposite. He was very cultured. He wanted there to be fun. Right? Everybody, just do what you want. What's so bad about that? On the other hand, what do the Jews want? <clears throat> That no, that no one should do what they want. Everyone should do what God wants. And even more, everyone should do, should want what God wants. That's what the first Rebbe of Chaban wanted. That's what the Hashmonim wanted. And that's what God wanted when he chose Abraham, that he should be the father of all mankind. So, I mean, is it, it's not such a big difference, is it? You know, either you act this way or you act that way. What difference does it make? Let everybody do what they want. Isn't that logical? So the answer to that is, you're right. If you look at the world from Napoleon's point of view, then it doesn't make any difference. It really doesn't make any difference. And unfortunately, the world was very, very affected by Napoleon's way of looking at the world. That, you know, just, you know, God is just take it or leave it. You know, whatever you want. But if you look at the world... Like the Hashemonaim, or like the Alter Rebbe, 
But like Abraham wants us to look at the world, then the world is a whole different business. <laughs> then the world, it's God's world. And what we do in this world <coughs> has tremendous, tremendous, incredible <coughs> reaction in all the upper worlds. We don't see it. But the fact is it's tremendous reaction to the point that these reactions of the upper worlds, they'll at some time be revealed here. That's the idea of the Mashiach. They'll be revealed here. And then the world will be, everything will be meaningful. We'll see, we'll feel God. It'll be a different, right? We'll, we'll see that every action that we do is filled with blessing, meaning, things that we, we don't comprehend nowadays. So th that's the idea of Mashiach. Mashiach will make a world where the values are infinite values. They're infinitely meaningful, infinitely live values, values <clears throat> that we don't feel now. Life, meaningful life that we don't feel now. <clears throat> it's only revealed a little bit, like after a person dies in the upper worlds and everything. But that's only for religious people. We're saying that everybody, even not religious people, they'll feel, see God and everything they do. Things will become infinitely, infinitely more real than they are now. <clears throat> that's the world that we're going after. That's the world. We're, but now this is all concealed from us. In the time, right before the Baal Shem Tov, there had been the Chmelnitsky massacres. A, a person called Bogdan Chmelnitsky, he, he led the rebels in the Ukraine to massacre tens, hundreds of thousands of Jews in the most atrocious ways. And then right after that, there stood up Shabbatai Tzvi, who was a false messiah. And people were just so crazy with pain and grief Everybody, everybody knew somebody who had been massacred. And came this person, Shabbatai Tzvi, became popular, and he was a very charismatic person, and he claimed that he was the Messiah, and people really thought that he was. In fact, he had none of the qualifications of Messiah. In fact, he had none. But he was very charismatic, and the Jewish people were suffering, so they thought that was the birth pains of Mashiach. And, and ended up, he was revealed to be a total imposter. Worse than an imposter. And in fact, it came out to be, he was a very evil man. <clears throat> and then, so the Jewish people now were really destroyed. No, they were really destroyed. They, 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 they hoped for Mashiach, and then there was, nothing happened. Finally, the last one that broke the straw was the, what's called the, the Enlightenment Movement. Suddenly, big rabbis started to <clears throat> leave Judaism. People who were Tremendous Talmudic scholars, they started to not keep Shabbat and learn the philosophies of the French philosophers of these and say that, in fact, there is no such thing as God. We're limiting ourselves. We're fooling ourselves. We, we have to learn, live in the way of like Napoleon, <coughs> that Napoleon wanted, Napoleon's world. All these people in the end, of course, they were all in favor of Napoleon. And, and, and so now, now Judaism was really at a low point. It lost its happiness. It lost its faith. It lost its love. It lost its meaning. Judaism was just a thing that you just, you know, the old people held on to with their fingernails because they had nothing, no, no other choice. They were old already. They couldn't do anything new. And all the new people, the young people, they, you know, they were full of life. They went, they wanted to leave Judaism. <laughs> came along the Baal Shem Tov, and he changed the whole thing. The Baal Shem Tov's teachings came along and said, you have no idea what true happiness is. You have no idea what true <clears throat> fun is until you feel the godliness of the Torah and the commandments. He changed the whole essence, turned everything inside out. Inside out, the inside, namely the soul, it came out. So that's what is the world, what happens when a person is unconscious. His insides, they're, you know, they're functioning, but the outside is, is, you can't see any life. By taking the inside, the life, and bringing it out, the person comes to life. That's what the Baal Shem Tov did, number one. Number two, a chassid is a person that does more 
than is expected of him. Like the rabbis say, sore from chassid, one who burns them as a chassid. We talked about this last time. It says the fingernails, if you cut your fingernails, and if they lay around, it says that if a pregnant woman passes over, it could be dangerous. So it says, <coughs> regular people, what do they care? They cut their nails, and they throw them around. Some a pregnant woman goes over it. Eh, who cares? Says the tzaddik that he buries them. He buries his fingernails so that nobody will pass over them. But, but still, it's a possibility that the wind will blow, blow away the, the, the dirt. Says, but a chassi burns them. Why? Because it says that if a, you burn part of your body, it could harm you. So a person who's a chassid <clears throat> is willing to harm himself rather than even the slight chance of harming somebody else. So that's what it means. A chassid <coughs> is someone who does more than what's expected from him. Number three. Okay, so chassid woke everybody up from, broke up Judaism from its unconsciousness. Chassid brought everybody to do more than what's expected of them. In other words, if you do what's expected from you, you go to heaven. But you do more than what's expected from you, you don't get anything out of it. But God does. And you're doing it for God. More than what's expected. Number three, a chassid <coughs> is a person that works on his personality so that not only does he change his natural character traits, Naturally, he has a bad temper. Naturally, he gets depressed. Naturally, he gets rid of the bad character traits. But even more, he changes the nature of his character. Not only does he change his natural traits, but he changes the nature of his good character traits. And there's instead of being a nice person, instead of being happy because it's a good thing to do, he's a nice person because God wants him to do it. Because God wants him to be kind. And he changes, and in that there's no end to the refinement you can make. Like the rabbi says, <coughs> the first rabbi says in the Tanya, in the Shulchan Aruch, the whole thing of Hasidut is to change the nature of your personality, not just to change your natural personality, not just to change your natural personality. Right? By your natural personality, you get angry sometimes, you get depressed sometimes, you have lust sometimes, and you change that. He says, no, not only that, but to change the nature of your personality, to change the nature of the good things that you do. <coughs> not just to change your personality, your natural personality, but to change the nature of the personality. In other words, not just to get rid of the bad things and do good things, but to improve the good things, you take away all, even the egotism that you do good things for. Number four. So sometimes you find a person that can be really helpful and pleasant and just a wonderful person to be around, but he's like a politician. You know, he's doing it because he knows he'll do good for you, or it's just his nature. He just likes to do good things for people. That's very nice. That's very nice. But person of, purpose of Hasidut is, is that instead of doing it because it's your nature, is you do it because that's what God wants you to do. And you really feel this. You really feel that you're acting in a way <clears throat> that God wants you to do. So you're improving your nature. Khaled. Torah Chasidut, <coughs> the teachings of Chasidut, they brought about that each and every person, even the most simple souls, simple people, and even people that are the most crass, low people, that they can have a good, clear idea of what God is. Because by means of that, the Torah Tachasidut explains these ideas of the mysteries of the Torah, the Kabbalah of the Torah, and he explains them with all sorts of examples and, <clears throat> and parables to explain <clears throat> how godliness is revealed in the world, one of the main ways is what, a thing that's called hashkaka pratit, namely that everything that happens in the world happens because of some divine direction, that God directs everything in the world. And it's for a grand purpose. Everything affects everything else. And by means of bringing all sorts of examples, a person can start to understand <clears throat> that God is much above my normal understanding and then in order to have a little bit of a comprehension of what God is, 
and I have to sort of let my normal way of understanding go and realize that there's a higher godly type of understanding. That's the cyber type of godly understanding is what Hasidut ideally wakes up. <coughs> that we can understand godliness from these examples. For instance, it says, from my flesh, I can know God. What does it mean, from my flesh, I can know God? It's from Job. <coughs> That every single human being can understand from his own personality and from his own aspects. Everybody has love. God has love. Everyone has intellect. God has intellect. From our intellect and our love, we can a little bit <clears throat> understand that God also has these aspects. One thing this is very useful for is to understand, <coughs> excuse me, that God, first of all, interacts with the world. God has also has a personality, even though it's infinite. Number two, that God really cares because he made us somehow or other in his image. And number three, that we can approach God from our own being. We can use ourselves as an example a little bit <clears throat> to at least approach, it, approach God. And like we've said a lot of times, this is the antidote to idolatry. Idolatry means that God is so far away and so incomprehensible that we have to pray to some person or something like that in the middle. But this, Hasidut comes to teach you that, no, we are made in God's image, and we actually can think and contemplate in these aspects of God. <laughs> Not only to understand these things in a religious way, also in an intellectual way, and even in a day-to-day -day normal way. We can understand God like we can understand shoes or, or eating food or buying a house. We can also bring a little bit of the understanding of God in every single thing that we do in the most natural, natural ways. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> So it's understood that Torah to Hasidut has one point, that it does not have any details. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> like I said before, <coughs> the point of Hasidut is the same thing as the point of the Torah. And it's the same thing as the point of reality. Namely, it all comes from God. And Hasidut is to reveal this. One point of Hasidut, which can sum everything up, <clears throat> and all the other details come out of it. Because all these good, these four good things that we just talked about, <clears throat> that it wakes up all the Jews, and it makes us do more than what we want to, and that even the most simple person can understand godliness and that it brings us to refine our personalities. All these different, these are just different good qualities. But it, we have, must say that all these good qualities, <coughs> <coughs> they do not in any way describe what is the essence of this Torah Achasidut. The essence of Chasidut is one essential point that is stripped of all details. <clears throat> but because it is one essential point, therefore everything comes out of it, all these details we said. I mean, in, in a way, this is sort of hard to understand, but in a way, it's not. Let's just take a simple example. Mathematics. What is mathematics? Without numbers, without any details without calculus, without the, the, the trigonometry, right? There's one essence, which is called mathematics. What is it, mathematics? I, let's, I don't know how you define it. Interrelationship between uh, more than one thing, right? <clears throat> in plurals. It, it, mathematics says you have to have more than one. So inter, interrelationships between <clears throat> uh, things that have more than one. Doubles, something, twiddles. Uh, what is, let's say, taking it, animals. What's animals? Animals is a general category, a general 
But what is animal? <clears throat> creations, living creations that walk on four. I don't know, make something. And it was, these are, it's a generality that from the generality comes out all the details, but the details do not explain what the generality is. <clears throat> the essential point of Hasidut is what, like we're explaining in, the, in a mimer, that the by the <clears throat> Rebbe Rishab, what is this mimer? It says number 411. Parabashalom, we talked about this before. It says, what's the essential point of Hasidut is bringing a new awareness of God from this level, which is called the inner level of God's crown. And even higher, from the inside of what's called Atik, Mamish, from the essence of this God's crown, the crown of God, which according to Kabbalah is called the beginning which cannot be known. Resha Dalo et Yada. The beginning which cannot be known. This essential aspect of God, which is the <clears throat> innermost point of godliness, this necessitates all of the other good things of Hasidut that come out from it. These are only just aspects that come out from this. Uh, let's take an example. Honesty. If a person is honest, honest, so then he can be rich. Why? Because if you're honest, it means that, first of all, you're not going to lie. You're not going to cheat. If you're honest, it means that you want to reveal, you're not going to lie to yourself. You want to reveal all of your potential, right? If you're honest, you're really truthful, then you'll know that money is a good thing. You can give charity, you can do this. And so therefore, if you're really honest, it means you're not going to be lazy. It means you're going to use all of your best abilities. It means you're going to try to find out <clears throat> what people need and to provide their needs, being honest. And you're going to provide their needs with the most efficient way. And you know that money is good. You're going to be honestly try to make money. But honesty does not necessarily produce richness. There could be a person that's honest and he's poor. But true richness comes only from a person who's honest. If you're tricky, you're lying, or something, you can be a multimillionaire, but it's not really truly rich. You're never going to be satisfied. You're never going to be happy. You'll never use the money for good things. It'll always be for bad things. <clears throat> so anyways, there's one essential point, godliness. And from godliness comes out the Torah, comes out all these things. But these things, so to speak, are not necessary to come out. In fact, they do. So that's this inner point of Hasidut is based on this inner point of godliness. Because Hasidut <clears throat> is drawing down this level of the infiniteness of God. So therefore, it's understandable that Ein Sof, that this essence of God is an essence. And everything that comes out of God's essence is just something that results from it. <clears throat> so just like trigonometry or calculus or algebra, they, they come out of mathematics. But the idea that there can be such a thing of mathematics, right? that's the general principle. It's not necessarily the, the, these other things will come out from it, but they do. These are aspects of mathematics. Maybe my example is not such a good one. But here we're saying that God is the essence of all being. And all other types of being and wisdom and the Torah come out from it. And all these other benefits that we add from Hasidut, that it wakes up the Jews and that even the most simple person can understand these deep ideas. Those are just things that, what, what do you call it? The insu from this essence of godliness, which is Hasidut. So in a, in a quick way, Hasidut talks about the essence of God. <clears throat> this essence of God that we talked about he talks about a Kabbalistic level, the Rasha Deloit Yada. This essence of God, which is presented in Hasidut, this is the, the main and really the only point of Hasidut, the essence of God. This is present in all four aspects of the Torah, which is called Pshat, Remish, Drush, and Sod. The Torah <clears throat> contains all of the 
other types of intellect or good qualities in the world. Generally, the world in man, there is what we call intellect and emotions. When a person acts in a way that is <clears throat> according to proper values, musariut, omido tovot, and he has good character traits, love, honesty, care, devotion, courage, hari, hamishpatim, vidarkia musa shabatora, and all the different aspects of the Torah. For instance, the the uh, how do you call it the uh, the, the uh, ethics of the Torah and Perki Avot. The, it, if it comes from the Torah, then this is the ultimate, uh, ultimately pure, the best type of ethics that you can possibly have, the most truthful and good character traits you can possibly have are those that are expressed from the Torah. Other religions also have, right? There's these other religions, you know, Buddhism and things like this, Confucianism, have these wonderful sayings, and they've also revealed tremendously wise ideas. But it's nothing compared to the Torah. To the degree that we can say that maybe all the other good things that are in the world, they come from the Torah. <clears throat> all of the other different types of philosophies or <clears throat> a ways of conduct of man that people make them up, they are mixed it up with good and bad. Truth and lies. And the good, which is in all these other, right, in Confucianism and Buddhism and all these wonderful sayings that come out from great people throughout the generations from the Greeks and the and etc. Right, <clears throat> these wonderful sayings, all of these have good and bad mixed in. Like it's known the story from the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe that once in his one of his journeys, he overheard an argument between several people, and they were, each one of them was saying that <clears throat> one type of government is better than the other type of government. And that type, in the time of the previous Rebbe, they were like before World War II, even afterwards, after World War II, there were all of these, I mean, like if you come in, in Israel, you see all these political parties. Everybody has a different idea and you know, different forms of communism, different forms of socialism, different forms of, you know. So somebody asked the Rebbe, which is the best economic system? Which is the best political system? So the Rebbe said that, um, right, what does the Torah say? <clears throat> so the Rebbe said, each one of them, <clears throat> I mean, and everybody brought proofs from the Torah that his way you know, communism was the way that the Torah wants. The democracy is the way the Torah wants. Socialism is the way the Torah. Each one had his own ideas. When they asked the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, he said that the Torah, because it is the ultimate truth and the ultimate good, so it contains all of these other types of philosophies and methods and, and answers and policies and politics, and, all, and it contains all of them. So that all the good, which is in any one of these, it comes from the Torah. But there's also a lot of bad. That's in regarding to character traits, fixing up your conduct. What about philosophy? The Torah, that's talking about right, emotions, how to fix up your What about your intellect? The Torah is the ultimate philosophy. Like it says, Not only that, and that the Torah gives life to the whole entire world. And the whole world depends on, on, not only that, but the whole world depends on the Torah. But this is not the essence of the Torah. The essence of the Torah is that the Torah is totally united with the infinite essence of God. <clears throat> and the essence of God is put into the Torah and the ultimate, ultimate level of unity. Therefore, since all the worlds are like nothing compared to Ein Sof, so so it is also with the Torah. Therefore, you cannot praise the Torah with any of its aspect. The Torah is so great, it gives life to all the worlds. The Torah is so great because it's, it's, it's infinite. Because the Torah, this is the, the whole worlds are like nothing to the Torah. 
You can't see the Torah is infinite. The Torah is this. That's these are true. These are aspects of the Torah, but that's not the essence of the Torah. But rather, what is the essence of the Torah? The essence of the Torah is that it is totally united with the essence of God. Above the wisdom of God, above the kindness of God, the love of God. Therefore, it contains all of the other good qualities and other types of completion which are in the world. And by means of this, there comes life into the world and wisdom. <clears throat> okay, just a few more minutes. <clears throat> But even though that all the other aspects of the Torah, <clears throat> all the Torah, the end, central point of all the other aspects of the Torah, Pshat, Remesh, Jush, Sod, is that they are come from God. They all come from God. They're all united with God. So what's Hasidu different? It says the main point that is pure godliness this is expressed in Hasidut. In other words, Hasidut talks about God clearly and directly. That's the its only subject. Like we said before, the Hasidut is drawing down the essence of God, which comes from this level of Reisha Daloit Yada. Because all the types of the Torah, <coughs> the infinite godliness which is in them, is put into some sort of a form. In the Gomorrah, it's more into intellect. In some, it's more in, in the secrets. There's some sort of a form which all the other types of Torah take. And this is the different type of how it is. There's the Pshat, the simple meaning of the Torah. The Rem is a little bit deeper meaning. Drush is a, what is a homiletic meaning. So is the secret meaning. But these are garments for godliness, and you see the garment more than the godliness. Therefore, it hides over the simple godliness which is inside of it. <clears throat> the, the garment becomes the main thing, right? The, the simple meaning of the Torah. There really was such a person as Abraham. There really was such a person as Sarah. So you don't see and feel godliness in this. It's just like a story, like any other story. You have to remind yourself that there is. But in Torah to Hasidut, because Torah to Hasidut really does not have any form to it, it's not considered to be one of the four types of pshat, remish, juice, and sod. It's, so to speak, Hasidut only talks about the godliness. It's not talking about any of these garments or, <clears throat> or any of the, 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 the definitions. <clears throat> the whole thing of Hasidut is <clears throat> to reveal within the garment of these other types of Torah <clears throat> is revealed revealing essence of God. Therefore, the Hasidut contains in it all the other four types of Torah, Pshat, Ruz, Jus, and Sod, and we'll see, eventually we'll see, the Rebbe takes an example, Modeani Lefanechem, one sentence, he explains it according to Pshat, simple meaning, Rem is a little deeper meaning, Drush, a homiletic meaning, and secret, he explains that, and then he shows how Hasidut brings out the godliness in those four different types of explanations of Modeani Lefanecha. <clears throat> Therefore, Hasidut enlivens all the other aspects of the Torah. Like it says, then with teachings of Hasidut, which constantly <clears throat> reminds us about the godliness and to understand the godliness in the Torah. <clears throat> so therefore, it makes it that the other types of forms of the Torah, the Peshat and Ramesh, the Sod, the garments of the Torah, they don't hide so much over the godliness of the Torah that's inside of them. Hasidut brings out the godliness, or if you want to say it more exactly, the Jewishness in all the other four types of the Torah. As we're going to talk about more, God willing, next week. So today, let's just a short summary. We learned about the four, four main uh, benefits that come from Hasidut. But then we learn those benefits do not necessarily, they only come from the essence. They don't show on the essence. They result from the essence of Hasidut. And what is Hasidut? Revealing God. Revealing God in all the other aspects of the Torah and eventually in the world. 
as we'll talk about more, God willing, next week. Yes, Shakar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shalom. Shavuot Tov, everybody. Oh, Shabbat Shalom, I mean. Shabbat Shalom, right. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hanukkah Sameach. Hanukkah Sameach, right. Next week will be Hanukkah. So next week we're going to learn what day? If Monday is fine, it'll be Monday. Ma see, now next week, we're going to have to figure it out. N Monday it happens to be that I'm appearing. I have to speak okay. and play at a Chabad house. So we'll really? have to see when to do it. We'll have to see when I'm going to be free and when it's going to be. We'll have to figure it out. But Monday I can't do it. Let's try to do it. Let's set it for, for Tuesday. Okay. okay. Is that okay? Yeah, Tuesday should be fine. It's only right. Sunday my wife has to class. So. Wonderful. So then on Tuesday, we're going to try to do it 10, 15 my time, 9, 15 your time. And the class will be 40 minutes, 4-0. Shalom. Thank you very much.